In this video, we study how the Gibbs energy depends on pressure at constant temperature. Alright, so in a couple of uh, prior videos, we have seen how the Gibbs energy depends on the conditions, and we have examined uh, the dependence of that Gibbs energy on temperature. Now we're going to exclusively concentrate on the dependence on pressure. Alright, so here's uh, the fundamental equation for the Gibbs energy showing the dependence on both pressure and temperature. Again, we've already talked a lot about uh, the temperature dependence. Now we're going to focus on the pressure dependence. Right, so I'm going to take this first derivative that we have right there and then use your more quantities because it's a little bit more intuitive to do that. Constant temperature, that is the more volume. Right, so uh, it's always useful to examine graphs to see this dependence of uh, functions on variables, right? So uh, what we can do here is try to begin to plot a uh, plot of the Moore Gibbs energy versus pressure, and again we will do this at, uh, I'm going to write here, constant temperature. And uh, this will be for pure substances. All right, so notice that the slope of these lines is going to be the more volume, uh, and this depends on the phase. But right? if you think about maybe water, you can have ice, liquid, and then gas, and we know that the more volume of a gas is much, much greater than the more volume of the liquid and the solid phases. As a matter of fact, for water, the molar volume of, of a gas uh, is, is about 22, 24 liters at around ambient conditions, uh, but the molar uh, volume of the liquid phase is at, uh, also at ambient conditions is about 18 mils, right? So that is a difference of 1300 in the uh, values of the molar volumes for the gas and the liquid. The gas being again uh, over a thousand times uh, greater molar volume than the liquid phase and also the solid. So what will happen here is that you're going to have uh, uh, lines of positive slopes. Notice that the molar volumes are always positive. So here you have lines of positive slopes, but the line of the gas is going to be, is going to have a clearly much greater slope than the line of the solid uh, or the uh, liquid, right? The line of the gas uh, is going to be very, very, very steep uh, with a slope of about, a, of about a thousand times greater. Again, that's a rough number that works well for water under ambient conditions, but uh, it's a useful number, about a thousand times greater slope for the gas than the liquid or the solid. All right, so that's something that we should expect to find. Well, great. Now, uh, a second question is whether these lines are going to be straight or are they going to exhibit some uh, curvature? All right, so uh, if the lines are straight, what that would mean is that the molar volume, which is the slope, does not change with pressure, right? So that would be that would mean that if you apply pressure to that sample, the volume should not change suppressively. And we know that that should be just fine for solids and liquids, but it's clearly not the case for gases, right? When you have a gas uh, and then you apply pressure, then you can change the volume readily. Uh, solids and liquids are much more incompressible, and that means that this is probably going to be just fine for uh, liquids and solids, right? Where again, you have to apply huge pressures in order to be able to change the volume just slightly. Uh, but that is not going to be the case. This uh, molar uh, volume is not going to be constant with pressure uh, for a gas. So again, what we are going to observe then is that the lines for the solid and the liquid should be largely, uh, uh, should, should largely have constant slope. Then uh, they, should be, they should be straight lines. But for the gas, you are going to have some curvature. Right, so uh, in the remainder of this video, we're going to try to derive those expressions for the straight lines of the solid and the liquid phase and for the curved line of the gas. All right, so to do that, we simply have to find an explicit dependence of the molar Gibbs energy of, of, on pressure, and we can do that via integration of this expression, which is not difficult to do, right? So we separate variables, uh, molar volume, differential of pressure, and now we integrate. Okay, so you integrate here from G1, uh, Gm1 to Gm2, and you integrate that from um, pressure 1 to pressure 2. Okay, great. Uh, this integral is simply delta Gm. 
And for this one, we then have to uh, think about again whether we have a gas, a solid, or a liquid. We're saying that uh, the compressibilities of solids and liquids are really, really small. That means that the molar, molar, molar volume does not depend dramatically on the pressure. If that's the case, then we can factor it out of this integral, and then uh, we'll just have to solve the integral of differential of P from P1 to P2, but of course, that is equal to delta P. Okay, and again, this only applies if you have a solid or a liquid phase. We're going to develop this a little bit more. Notice that this is simply the molar gives energy at a pressure P2 minus the molar gives energy at a pressure P1. And this is equal to the molar volume, which should be constant in that pressure range, multiplied by P2 minus P1. Okay. All right, uh, we can uh, do something else, and that is to say, well, let's assume that P1 is just going to be a reference for us. We could actually choose one bar, which is what we call standard conditions, right? So if uh, this is one bar, then uh, we can simply write this is equal to the standard, more or less standard E, and that is our superscript for standard conditions. And that means that this P1 will be one bar, or P standard. Okay, and that will be a constant. All right, so we can rearrange this expression uh, a little more. We can pass this uh, more gives energy to the other side of this uh, equality, and then uh, the way that this expression is going to look like is simply like this. Okay, the more gives energy at a pressure p, whatever this is. This could be half bar or two bar or ten bar, whatever your conditions are, is going to be equal to this expression where p is the temperature that you're interested in. Right, so again, notice that this is exactly the graph that we're trying to plot. This is just how the molar gives energy changes with pressure. Okay, is that? And notice that this, this is just a straight line. Right, this is a constant. That's simply the molar gives energy at one bar for that substance. This could be water, for example. So that's a number. And then the molar volume is another number that is known. And then that's the variable, the pressure, and that's the pressure, the standard state, which is one bar. So, so this is a constant, constant, constant that changes, this is the equation of a straight line of positive slope, because again, notice that that is positive. Okay, so uh, we can uh, write here how this is going to look like for a solid, perhaps. We're going to do that, right, so that is the line of the solid, and this slope is just equal to the molar volume of the solid phase. The same thing is going to happen for the liquid phase, right? So uh, liquids are also highly incompressible, uh, and that means that the variation of the molar gives energy with pressure should be a straight line. And what I'm going to do, to do here is draw a line that has a very similar slope, okay, but a level higher for the liquid. Liquid, and uh, that slope will be the molar volume of the liquid phase. Now, uh, this is the general behavior for most substances, but there are some substances that do not behave like that at all. For example, water. Right? We know that when you put water uh, in the freezer, liquid water in the freezer, it expands upon freezing. That means that the molar volume of the solid is greater than the molar volume of the liquid. Right? So what that means is that these lines will be swept for water. There are other substances, aside from water, that uh, have a larger molar volume than this uh, for the solid and the liquid, uh, but those tend to be a little rare and they are hard to see. For example, silicon would be an elemental substance that has a higher molar volume for the solid than the liquid, or antimony would be another one. Right? But the problem is that those solids tend to have really high melting points, and that means that you never get to see those. Right? So uh, we're always going to be uh, using water as the exception to the general trend, the otherwise general trend, that solids tend to have uh, lower molar volume than the liquids, and that will be the general order for these uh, lines uh, in this graph. All right, so we have dealt with uh, solids and liquids. Now we're going to handle the gas, and where we clearly see that these lines will not be straight because the molar volume of a gas does change with pressure. The other thing that we know is that this slope should be much larger for the gas because. Uh, again, for something like water, you have 
uh, that the molar volume of the gas at the same conditions is about a thousand times greater than the molar volume of the liquid or the solid. Right, but uh, our, our uh, work, our, our work for the rest of this video would be to try to see how this turns out then for uh, a gas. All right, so let's do this for a gas. Well, the left-hand side of this integral is exactly the same thing as we had before, so I can already write it uh, spelled out, right? So uh, the molar gives energy at a pressure P2 minus the molar gives energy at a pressure P1, which I'm simply, uh, I will later uh, change that to the standard state, yes, for convenience. And now we have to integrate this, but notice that the molar volume does not depend on pressure. That means that we actually need to have the dependence of the molar volume uh, of on pressure, and for that we can, because this is a gas, we can simply invoke the ideal gas equation of state. That is, the ideal gas equation of state is this, RT, which means that the molar volume is equal to RT over P. All right, so that will be uh, a new expression that we have to integrate, and I'm going to write it right here, but that should be a straightforward integral. Right, so from P1 to P2, this is going to be RT, and then for convenience, I'm just going to write differential of P over P. Okay, great. So we just have to integrate this, but I can notice that now these uh, two uh, variables here, they're not variables, they're constants, right? That R is the uh, ideal gas constant, and T is constant uh, in this particular examination of how the molar gives energy depends on pressure. So they factor out of the integral, and that means that the, what you have to integrate is differential of P over P, but that is just a natural log. Okay, so we can write that simply as RT, natural log of P2 over P1. Okay, so that is uh, how the molar gives energy depends on pressure for this gas. Now we can uh, rearrange this a little bit uh, better, much as we have done for the liquid and the solid by saying that arbitrarily I can choose this P1 to be the standard stage, so one bar, and that means that this is simply going to be that, and that P1 is going to be P standard. Okay, and then say, well, instead of P2, I can just call it P, and this could be whatever pressure I want, so this could be half bar, or three bar, or, or 700 bar, it doesn't matter, a P of my choice. And finally, uh, I can simply rearrange this so uh, it looks like that. Okay, so this is uh, the expression for the line that we have to draw on that diagram, right? So uh, the molar gives energy at any pressure, which will be this one, is going to be equal to a constant, the molar gives energy at one bar for that substance, uh, plus RT, uh, and then you have a logarithmic dependence on the pressure, right? So, so that's where the curvature in, the, in this line is going to emerge. And I'm going to draw this in red marker. Uh, and again, what we expect to find here is a line with a slope that for water should be about a thousand times greater at ambient conditions, right? So something that is really, really stiff and with some uh, sort of uh, logarithmic curvature, okay, that uh, uh, we can continue to draw, draw like that. Okay, so this is the line for the gas. And then uh, the slope of this line is equal to uh, the molar volume of the gas, which obviously changes with pressure. Right, uh, as we will see uh, later on, uh, it turns out that the crossings of these lines are also important, but we will only get to that once we start with uh, phase transitions. Uh, so let me wrap up. In this video, we have seen how the molar gives energy of a pure substance depends on pressure at constant temperature, and we've drawn uh, equations that allow you to calculate the explicit dependence of the molar gives energy on pressure. Now also we have uh, plotted those expressions so that you can have a visual representation of that variation of the molar gives energy with pressure.